Thank you for joining me for another Quick Hits Conversation. I'm Dr. Robin. With me today, I have Chris Thompson, Sarah Oblick Spiker, and Dr. Bob Choate. The question I have, how do you overcome a bad first impression? Chris, can you kick us off, please? Certainly. Well, I did a little research and actually I found an article on the Harvard Business Review entitled Four Ways to Overcome a Bad First Impression. And here are cheating, four, of those, four of those ways that I'm going to give one personal <laughs> example about how I, how I did this. Uh, you can surprise people. You can overcompensate for your first uh, uh, failure, so to speak. You can get closer to them and you can also wait it out. So let me talk about uh, how I used one of these strategies in my own life. In 1984, I was interviewing for a job at a Wall Street trading firm, and I was told to go out onto the floor and just introduce myself to everybody. So I looked around, everybody was busy, and I saw one gentleman sitting there just kind of gazing up into the sky. And I walked up, I extended my hand, and I said, hi, I'm Chris Thompson. And he looked at me and he goes, no interest. I said, okay, this isn't good. What do I do? Well, I said, I guess I could just sit down. So I'll get closer to him. I literally sat down next to him and I just waited. And then I looked at his surroundings and I said, so are those your children? And he goes, of course, they're my children. And I said, so tell me their names. So the moral of this story is when uh, you make a bad first impression, sometimes you just have to move closer to the people and then do what's uncomfortable to you, but do what shows them, especially in a place like New York City and a Wall Street trading firm, that you're not going to run away with your tail between your legs. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. What I hear with, with Chris is that you, you become close in, 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 in a sense, because I've done this as well, be, to become interested in a person. So you get them to open up and everything like that. So when you're interested, and it's been said, you become more interesting to, to them. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's very, very important. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, as a people pleaser in recovery, <laughs> I know how daunting it can be uh, when you make up stories in your head before you even have an interaction with somebody for the first time and you're trying, you put all this pressure on yourself and you're trying to get into their heads what their expectations might be. And it's just, it drains so much energy. And one of the things that I've heard from some of my coaches many years ago that were just so eye-opening is like at the end of the day to the right person you can never say the wrong thing and mm -hmm. to the wrong person you will never say the right thing however hard you try and that's something that I train myself through all the networking events through all the business outreach that were so far out of my comfort zone I was like oh well, just might as well give it a try and if it's a bad impression why it's a bad impression anyways like just because I have, I perceive that somebody has a bad impression of me, or was it actually hurtful to the other person or even mm. worse? So mm. that's interesting because I know when I think about bad first impressions, I have a lot of stories where people have come up to me after they've known me for a while and said, oh, when I first met you, I thought X, Y, Z, but you're not like that at all. You're actually really nice. So I made a bad first impression and didn't even know it till after it wasn't an issue anymore. Mm -hmm. So maybe bad first impressions are something that you shouldn't have to worry about Do you actually know they exist. Dr. Robin, uh, one example that I uh, think about often is when people in a work uh, context are, are late for their first appointment, their first interview, I have a tendency to judge them as uh, unreliable. But uh, I think if someone found themselves in that position where they were being looked down on because they were tardy for whatever reason, they could overcompensate by showing up well in advance for all subsequent get together. So for instance, as a classroom teacher, if my students came in late, I didn't have a good impression of them. But once I told them that uh, being on time was important, if they were to show up early for the next two, three, four, five classes, that would kind of remove that uh, bad first impression permanently because they've overcompensated for their first uh, error. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I just wonder how much uh, because Chris men mentioned uh, work context, I wonder how much context and culture mm. plays an impression. Uh, for for example, I had a, a B one way. Uh, for example, when when I was in the Marines and LAPD, as well as running an international martial arts organization, versus being another way if if I'm with uh, fellow psychologists, things like that, mm. and then also in other areas. So I, I can use the the doctor card in one context, but it becomes a detriment in another one. So if, if I go into certain areas, 
people will look down on me because I'm known as Dr. Bob. So I don't use that at all. I, mm. I, so so I, I have to dress a certain way, act a certain way, depending on who I'm dealing with. And getting that right in that first impression is part of the, the skill, I guess, because it is easy to get it wrong if you if you know you're going in. Because there are certain places like in Lat- Latinx countries, it doesn't matter if you're a little bit late, like they don't care. But here in the United States, that's a thing. And I think that to your point about culture, it, it you really have to know kind of what it, what first impression do you want to make and are you being aware of it? Yeah. And then I also believe that despite whatever attire you have on, despite of all the labels and all the titles and everything else, I'm a firm believer that in your energy introduces you before you even open your mouth, the way you Mm -hmm. enter the room, whether it's virtual or 3D, that has a lot to do with that as well. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter how, even in the world of business, how you package up the perfect presentation, it's going to be your energy that will speak volume. And I think you have to decide too is, so if, you all, if you've made a bad impression, whatever that means, do you care? Does the person who has a bad impression, whatever their judgment is, does it matter? It does. It, for me, it does. And I have gone back and I said to a person, do you mind starting again? Or I'm so sorry that didn't quite go well. Or if it was something that unintentionally hurt them, I'm mm-hmm. going to just say, I'm so sorry. That was not my intention. How can I make this right for you? Mm-hmm. Sometimes even looking back, years have gone by and something just doesn't sit right well with me. And I'm like, I don't know if you remember, but I'm still brewing on this thing. Yeah. All these years ago. So, and, and we lost a participant. Off you ran. It wasn't the one I expected to lose. It wasn't me. I thought you were going to be. It wasn't you, Bob. <laughs> That's funny. So, um, yeah, I think that my point is sometimes people think that I'm I'm too big, I'm too much, I'm too much energy, whatever it is, and I'm just like, well, I'm not going to make myself small to fix that first impression. I'm that's I am big and I have a big energy and that impression's right and it's kind of too bad if you don't like it. Yeah. 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 I've heard on my end that oh you're so serious cuz and it gave me a pause and I went back to examine how I present myself online. I'm like, I'm not even that serious of a person. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. One of the things that um, that a lot of Westerners for, or, or really don't understand, if they go and they, they do, let's say they uh, do, do a, a business meeting or something like that with somebody from Asia, p- particularly the um, Japanese. Mm-hmm. Number one thing, don't put your hand in your pocket when, when you're conversing with them. Don't mm-hmm. ever do that. Mm-hmm. Second thing, don't ever talk about business when you're uh, at a meal. Don't ever do that. Oh. We do that here in the United States. We'll go and, and have a business meal. You go to Japan, you do that. No way. That just doesn't work. I'm half Japanese, and I understand it from that perspective. But we we cannot do those kind of things. So we really have to understand who we're talking to, their their cultural norms, things like that, b- before we engage them. Otherwise, we have a major first um, bad first impression. You make a faux pas, and then that's hard to overcome. Those cultural norms in other countries, I think those that's a hard hard thing to come come back from. Yeah, especially yeah. since so many of them are so stereotypical already. My our family friend from Slovenia, he traveled a lot to the States. And before even boarding a plane, he already had this picture in his mind what to expect because of all these stereotypes. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Dr. Robin, I'm sorry I got bounced out of there, but I'm back here. I want to share one last thing. Maybe it's good to ask ourselves, instead of how to avoid making a bad first impression, it's how do you make a good first impression? And there's a wonderful book called How to Connect in Business in 90 Seconds or Less. And one of the first things people are looking for is appropriate eye contact. And mm-hmm. you're not going to stare somebody down in both eyes. What the author suggests is that you look at them long enough to discern what color their eyes are, and then you could turn your glance away. So uh, it's very subtle business or uh, visual clues, I should say, in a business setting that will allow you to make a good first impression. But just be warm, just be friendly. And if someone doesn't have a good first impression, maybe you just say next and let that thing go, especially if it's in a networking context. 
Absolutely. And that is our 10 minutes. So I'm going to cut us off there. Thank you so much for having this conversation with me. And I look forward to doing it again really soon. Thank you.